I'm Kelly, and if you're new to my channel, welcome. This video is part of a series I've been creating about my keratoconus and my experience with it, as well as its treatment options. This video in particular is about my experience with cross-linking, which I have just received, and I'm two days out from it. If you're curious about what the procedure entails entirely, I will link my previous video that I made, which was the cross-linking instructions in the description box below. That being said, keep in mind I am two days out from the procedure, so if the audio quality is a little bit off or the visual quality is a little bit off, as well as my appearance, that might be a little off, I do apologize. I'm still in the recovery process. I'm just trying to get this out to you as soon as possible so I don't forget everything that went on during the procedure. This particular video is going to be mostly just about my experience with the procedure. I will be creating a, another video later on which is just general post-operative tips and tricks which will include tips and tricks for after the transplant as well as tips and tricks for after the cross-linking. I know I've discussed this before in several of my other videos, but I want to condense some of this information so there's one video that you can come back to and reference for if you're getting a one of these procedures. So, beforehand I was just honestly slightly nervous about the procedure. I was most nervous about two things. I was most nervous about the removal of the layer of skin on the cornea and I was nervous about staring at the UV light for 30 minutes. I was nervous about staring at the UV light because I had thought that it was going to be very bright and I am typically light sensitive as it is. So that made me a little bit nervous about how uncomfortable that would be. So going into the procedure, I went into the room. Obviously they're going to take you into a separate room and they began numbing me up to begin with the rumor removal, excuse me, sorry. I might mumble a little bit in this video because I'm still a little bit tired from the recovery process. But so they began numbing me up for the removal of the outer layer of skin on my cornea and Surprisingly, the numbing drops stung a little bit more than I'm used to. I mean, it wasn't horrendous or anything, but I just let... I think... I don't know what she is, and I feel bad. I, I don't know if she's assistance, but she, she runs most of the uh, cross-linking at this center that I go to. So, she began numbing me up. I just let her know that I was singing a little bit more than usual. And then after she was numbing me up and the doctor that was going to be working with me was free because he had a meeting beforehand. He came in, he I'm guessing scoped out my eye a little bit. That was just a really bright light I had to look at for a second and that was a little uncomfortable but as I said I'm pretty light sensitive so that's kind of what I had feared for the light was just this really bright light, but that only lasted for a couple seconds. As far as the removal of the cornea skin, um, it was weird and it was a little uncomfortable, but it didn't hurt so much. It, it was weird because you did kind of see like this clear jelly looking stuff on your eye, which is your skin. That's gross. I hope I don't bug people by giving like these details, but you, you saw your skin a little bit and it was interesting to me. But, so, they removed the outer layer of skin. That didn't hurt that much. It was a little bit uncomfortable. Sorry, there's a deer outside. I'm surprised I can even see that. But, so that was a little bit uncomfortable, but it wasn't terrible. And then they began dropping in the riboflavin drops and that was every two minutes. So I said it could vary depend on, depending on what your doctor does or what it was specified after it got FDA approved, but it was every two minutes for the riboflavin drops, and that was pretty good. 
no real complaints with that. It did start stinging after a little bit of time and I didn't really realize that that wasn't normal because I didn't really ask for numbing drops. <laughs> so I thought that was just part of the process, but it turns out that, and well, you guys don't know who any of these people are. Unless there were two people, two assistants that helps with the riboflavin drops with me. One of them, you have to ask for the numbing drops in order to get them. The other one will just give them to you regardless. So the second assistant came in and told me that. She's like, oh yeah, she will give them to you if you ask, but you have to ask. I will just give them to you either way. So she gave me some numbing drops and I was like, oh, now it doesn't feel like anything. I thought it was just supposed to sting. So the stinging went away from the riboflavin drops and I believe you had to have the riboflavin drops stripped into your eye for about 30 minutes. Um, actually, I could have skipped a part. I may have skipped a part. I don't know exactly the timing of this, so I'm so sorry about that. I know that they have to measure the thickness of your cornea, and again, this is all outlined in my previous video. I read off of a sheet where it tells you exactly what's going down during this procedure. They have to measure the thickness of your cornea. They do it twice. They do it after they've removed the first layer of skin on your cornea. And then if, if it's not thick enough, they use a swelling solution. The assistant that worked with me for the most part on this told me that the machine they use, generally they have to swell you. So that was another uncomfortable part. And I believe actually, I believe it might have been after some riboflavin drops, but I could be wrong. I want to pull this up, but I shouldn't really even be reading this. Either way, they had to swell me. That was a little bit uncomfortable. The doctor was very nice, but he kind of kept digging the speculum into my eye. So I was like, would it be possible to get some more numbing drops? And he was like, oh yeah, of course. So he gave me a couple more, but they had to flush out my eye with some of the riboflavin. So I had to wait a little bit longer to get a large dose of, dosage of numbing drops. But um, it wasn't that bad. It was just a little uncomfortable. The drops were stinging a little bit at that point. So I'm guessing, I'm guessing I had realized that, um, I'm guessing it was after they gave me some riboflavin drops. I'm sorry, I'm going to be rambling on this. I'm guessing it was after they had given me some riboflavin drops and that one assistant had told me that I needed to ask for numbing drops because she wasn't going to give them to me if I wasn't complaining or asking for them. So I was like, oh, I know these drops aren't supposed to sting anymore. And I know this guy is kind of digging the speculum into my eye, so I should ask. So after that, they were using, I'm so sorry about him in the background. There's a deer and he's going crazy. <laughs> Finley. No. No. Come here. Come here. So they had to swell me up. That was a little uncomfortable, but I asked for a riboflavin drop. I will be right back. <laughs> All right, sorry, pardon the interruption from my dog there. So they had to swell me up. That was a little bit uncomfortable, but after I had asked for some numbing drops, it was a little bit better. Then, I don't know if that's when they began the UV lights, they ha may have, either way, it was, they either began the UV light or had to do drops for just a little bit more, and then began the UV light. I was nervous about the UV light, but the UV light really wasn't that bad. It was like a little red light with, I think it might have been green, but it looked blue after you've been staring at it for a while. So, you stare at the light for about 30 minutes, and they were good enough to be talking to me the whole time so I wasn't just sitting staring at a light um, but and then every five minutes I believe they would drip more riboflavin on your eye while you were looking at the light so that was that was the end of the procedure 
it really wasn't that bad. Right after, they gave me a few numbing drops to go home with. They said it would sting. It did begin stinging probably about a half hour afterwards. It was uncomfortable for, it was uncomfortable for probably about a day and a half. I am two days out now and I'm really not feeling any pain. I'm just kind of having the hazing and trouble seeing. So let me just go over what I'm not supposed to do for the next couple weeks. I'm not supposed to get water in my eye. I'm not supposed to wear makeup. I'm cheating a little bit, but I'm not wearing any eye makeup. So I'm not supposed to wear makeup, not supposed to get water in my eye. I am supposed to wait a week to exercise. I honestly think that for my version of exercise lately, I probably have to wait a little bit longer than that. I've been ice skating as my exercise and I used to skate when I was younger and just got back to it after 10 years, but I started jumping again and stuff like that, so I don't think they would approve of me doing those tricks, not really be ab being able to see that well and after this procedure. No swimming for a month, I mean it's winter time, so that's not really that big of a deal only bummer is I like to do my mom and I go to sensory deprivation tanks every once in a while so we can't do that for a month but that's okay um what else I have a bandage contact in my eye for a week a little bit over because it will be over a week until I go to my next appointment and then after my one week appointment it will be a three month follow up appointment and I will let you guys know about that. For your after procedure recovery, they give you some sleeping medication, they give you some Tylenol 3. If you have problems with prescription medications, I would talk to them about that because Tylenol 3 is a prescription pain med um, and it does knock you on your butt. But it was good because it allowed me to sleep for a couple days. And with the eye drops, they give you a steroid drop and they give you an antibiotic drop that you have to take every six hours, four times a day, every six hours. So much like my transplant, I am on a 6-12 schedule, so at 6 in the morning and 12 in the afternoon and then 12 in the morning, 6 in the evening, sorry, and then 12 in the morning. So, I will go over that in more detail, especially just about showering and keeping clean because it's kind of hard to get used to when you haven't had a procedure done before. So, showering, getting clean, taking medication, putting on your eye patch, sleeping positions. I will go over that in the next video. I think it might be really helpful because luckily for me, my parents are in the medical field so they were able to help me get used to it but now I have my own routine so I can fill you guys in as a resource to you so I think that's going to wrap up this video um, the pain is gone today so really it is a fast recovery I do want to say though keep in mind that everyone does have a different pain tolerance Apparently, I have a pretty high one. I didn't really ask for a numbing drop after they had to swell my eye, and apparently that's not very common. So, if it hurts for me for only a couple days, it might hurt maybe a day longer, but I don't think much beyond that because they said the typ typical recovery is the first few days are the worst, and then you're pretty much back to normal because you're just healing that first layer of skin and that's the worst part. So that being said, I am looking forward to making the post-op tips and tricks for cross-linking and the corneal transplant and I will see you then. Bye! Just a quick note on post-procedure instructions and what they gave you. You also received an eye patch of course to patch yourself up before you sleep 
and some of the over the glasses sunglasses which honestly I should probably be wearing today I'm not super light sensitive but you will need them for the first couple of days 